Hello, welcome to watch Creative Proteo Mix video. Today, we are going to briefly introduce post-translational modifications. As we know, the human gene set was estimated at about 25,000 genes, while the total number of proteins is expected to be much larger, and estimated at over 1 million. The single genes can encode multiple proteins. In addition to alternative splicing mRNA editing as a source of protein complexity, post-translational modifications of proteins can further facilitate the complexity from the level of the genome to the proteome. Post-translational modifications have a role in different ways. Proteolytic processing results in the activation through cleavage of different sites in the protein. In addition, Post-translational modifications can tag proteins for destruction, like polyubiquitylation-mediated degradation of proteins. Moreover, they can lead to activation, interaction, localization, and secretion by post-translational modification-dependent recognition. They might induce conformational changes or form a docking site to mediate molecular recognition and stabilize the protein and ligand and protein and protein interactions. By reversible multi-site post-translational modifications, they can rapidly and dynamically regulate or modulation protein activities, protein and protein interactions, as well as protein and DNA interactions. There are over 200 types of post-translational modifications which been identified. They can affect many aspects of cellular functionalities, like metabolism, signal transduction, and protein stability. Next, we will briefly introduce some common post-translational modifications, including phosphorylation, glycosylation, methylation, acetylation, and ubiquitination. Protein phosphorylation, in which an amino acid residue is phosphorylated by the addition of a covalently bound phosphate group, is the most widespread type of post-translational modifications used in signal transduction. Phosphorylation is done by the kinases, and dephosphorylation is done by phosphatases that play opposite roles. In eukaryotic cells, about 86.4% of the protein phosphorylation events occur on serine, while 11.8% of protein phosphorylation events occur on the threonine, whereas only 1.8% on tyrosine residues. Protein phosphorylation plays an extremely important role in many processes, including mediating metabolism, transcription, cell and cycle progression, cell differentiation, and so on. Protein methylation involves the addition of a methyl group to a protein amino acid. The methyl group is one of the smallest post-translational modifications, and affects relatively little to the steric bulk of the modified side chains. It is reported that methylation can occur on the side chains of at least 9 of the 20 common amino acid residues, including arginine, lysine, histidine, methionine, cysteine, glutamine asparagine, glutamic acid, and aspartic acid. Among them, arginine and lysine are by far the most commonly methylated residues. In addition, methylation of arginine or lysine does not affect the overall charge of these residues, and their side chains remain positively charged even when methylated. Lysine residue can be methylated up to three times, and an arginine residue up to two times. Glycosylation the attachment of sugar moieties to proteins, is critical for a wide range of biological processes in the cell. There are different types of glycosylation. N-linked glycosylation involves the attachment of the sugar molecule to a nitrogen atom, which is the omega nitrogen of an asparagine residue of a protein. O-linked glycosylation is the attachment of a sugar molecule to an oxygen atom in an amino acid residue of the protein. C. Manosylation involves attachment of an alpha manosyl residue. Phosphoglycosylation involves the attachment of sugar to proteins through a phosphodiester bond. Glypiation is a special form of glycosylation, in which a protein is attached to a lipid anchor. Protein acetylation involves the process that the acetyl group from acetyl coenzyme is transferred to a specific site on a polypeptide chain. 
proteins can be acetylated by both enzymatic and non-enzymatic processes. In humans, almost proteins become co-translationally acetylated at their end termini of the nascent polypeptide chains. An acetyl group can be transferred from acetyl coenzyme to the N-terminal amino group of a polypeptide, catalyzed by N-terminal acetyltransferases. Reversible acetylation of the epsilon amino group of a lysine residue is the other common type, which is catalyzed by lysine acetyltransferases and lysine decetylases. In addition, acetylation interferes with metabolic processes and energy homeostasis due to the consumption of acetyl coenzyme during acetylation and oxidized nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide during decetylation by specific lysine decetylases. Ubiquitination involves the attachment of the polypeptide ubiquitin to target proteins by a set of three enzymes, including ubiquitin activating enzyme E1, ubiquitin conjugating enzyme E2, and ubiquitin ligase E3. The E1 enzyme first activates the carboxy terminus of the ubiquitin molecule, using the energy from converting an ATP molecule to AMP and pyrophosphate. The activated ubiquitin is attached to the sulfur of the E1 active site cysteine residue. Ubiquitin is then transferred from E1 to E2, and E3 facilitates the transfer of ubiquitin from E2 to the substrate protein. Ubiquitination can mark proteins for degradation via the pertesum, alter their cellular location, affect their activity, and promote or prevent protein interactions. With years of experience in protein and proteomics, Creative proteomics can provide a variety of post-translational modification services to assist your scientific research. We can provide phosphorylation analysis, glycosylation analysis, methylation analysis, acetylation analysis, ubiquitination analysis, nitrosylation analysis, and disulfide bond localization service. Thanks for watching our video. At Creative Proteomics. We provide the most reliable services. If you have any questions or specific requirements, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are very glad to cooperate with you.